Our next fringe benefit is in paragraph 2H and paragraph 13. They talk about it of the seventh uh, seven schedule. And this is a situation where the employer pays the employee's debt. So you owe a clothing retailer, let's say Edgar's, you owe them 5,000 rands on your account and your employer pays that. Or you owe your cell phone on your cell phone, you own 1,000 rands, you've got an account there and your employer pays it. Okay, so what happens then? Basically what happens is the amount that the employer pays is the amount that will be included as the cash equivalent. So it's simple as that. But there are situations where there is no value. And when will there be no value? There will be no value if the payment is a subscription to a professional body, if that's a requirement of employment. So when you start working and you've now registered to SACA, you're a chartered accountant and your employer and you have to pay SACA 5,000 rands each year, let's say, for your membership, your employer pays that. Right, no, there will be no value if it's a requirement of your job. Or if it's an insurance premium that the employer pays, that indemnifies the employee against claims arising from negligent acts. So you work as an audit partner at a firm, you have to take out professional indemnity insurance so that if something goes wrong and you get sued, that there's insurance that takes that out. Right. And your employer pays that if it relates to the services of that you're in there. Because the partner will obviously be doing partner tasks and duties for the, uh, for the business, so therefore, that will not have a fringe benefit as well. Right, and then the last one, guys, very specific situation. An employee receives a bursary from employer one. Let me actually explain it to you as follows. Let's say you are working or Sassel gives you a bursary of 50,000 rands when you are studying. And they tell you, you must come and work for us for five years. So after you've studied, completed studying, you come and work for them for five years to pay back that bursary. If you don't complete the five years working for them, then you have to pay in an amount. We've all heard of situations like this. Okay, so you're working for Sassel. Then, while you're working for Sassel, BP, British Petroleum Council, says they want you to work for them. Now, let's say you've worked for Sassel for two years already. So there's three years left. Now, that means, and I'm going to just assume that that means that you have to pay Sassel 50,000 times 3 over 5, so 30,000. Okay. If BP, so this is your debt to Sassel, remember that now. So, I'm going to just go from the start again. When you were studying, Sassel gave you a bursary of 50,000 rands and told you you have to work for them for 5 years. Otherwise, you have to pay back part of that low bursary. So you start working for them. After you've worked for them for two years, so there's three years left, BP comes to you and says they want you to work for them and you accept that. So now Sassel says to you, okay, that 50,000 rands, you owe us 30,000 rands of that because you haven't completed your five years. So whose debt is it? Your debt to Sassel. If BP now comes and pays that debt, Right, so they pay it on behalf of you. Then there will be no fringe benefit, but only if this three years that's left, you have to work that back to BP. So if BP says to you, okay, we'll pay that 30,000, but then you must work those three years for us. If that is the case, then there's no fringe benefit. But if BP just pays it and you don't have to work it back, then there definitely is a fringe benefit.